I'm going to reveal my top 10 secret places to find gold. Coming in at number one is garage sales and yard sales. Now I know that sounds like a no brainer, but you can find a lot of gold and silver at garage sales, estate sales, and yard sales. When you're checking the rings, look for the inside right of the ring for the carat. If you're looking on necklaces, look on the clasp. Usually you'll see what the carat weight is. If you see a number, like 750, that usually means it's 18 carat. It's referred to as a hallmark number. These are the hallmark numbers that are associated with the carats so that you can understand how much gold is in there. If you're selling your gold, this is the refinery that we go through. They pay 95% spot on 24 karat gold. I strongly recommend that you get a rare earth jewelry test magnet to test your jewelry when you're at these yard sales. I would also recommend getting yourself a jeweler's loop so you can inspect it for the markings for carat weight. We would also recommend getting yourself an acid test kit. That way you can be sure of the purity of the gold that you're purchasing at these garage sales. Now number two on my list is old ball mills and stamp mills. You'd be amazed at how many of these things have never been cleaned out. And a lot of the heavy metals like gold and silver are going to be trapped down in the armor plating of the ball mills or they're going to be down in the bottom of the mortar boxes of the stamp mills. This is a good example of a batch mill and I've seen these run a lot in artisanal mines in South America and Africa. You have this small opening here and a plate that goes over it. You charge it with a load of ore and you can also put your balls in there too. Run it around for a couple hours, turn it upside down. You have a mesh here to catch the balls and then all your powdered ore, which is mixed with water, comes out the bottom. Then you'd run that across a shaker table. You see how you have to go in steps. The neat thing about this one is it's, it was made in Nevada Ironworks or Engineering Works. See that? And these little guys right here, those are the dies and those are the shoes. See that? And the ore comes in from the back and there's always a screen here. That's what these are for right here. The screen would lock into place and the ore couldn't come out of there until it was pound to a pulp. When you find these old ball mills or stamp mills, go ahead and pull the armor plates out of the ball mills. I know it's going to be a hard job to do because a lot of the bolts on the outside are rusted shut. But a lot of your gold, your free mill gold, is going to be trapped in between those plates. And you're not going to be able to fish it out until you take those plates out. Now, as far as the stamp mill goes, you be careful with those stamps. I've seen many men stick their hand in there trying to fish out some large pieces of flattened gold only to have their hand flattened by 1,500 pounds of force and then later have to have it amputated because a lot of those stamps are just waiting to drop. Number three on my list is beaches and coastal areas. Now believe it or not, there is a lot of super fine gold that can be found on these beaches and coastal areas. Places like this. Most of the gold that you find on Gold Beach in Southern Oregon is derived from the Rogue River, which passes right through the area and then flows into the Pacific Ocean. The best place to look for gold along Gold Beach is south of Coos Bay. Another great place to look for placer gold along beaches is Lake Superior. Areas that are known for higher than average concentrations of placer gold along the shores of Baraga, Marquette, and Algeria counties. You'll always have a good chance of finding some placer gold there. Now a channel that we really like that's really good about recovering flower gold on coastal beaches is a channel called Flower Gold Wizards. I'm going to go ahead and leave a link down below and I think you'd learn a lot just by watching them. Coming in at number four is outwash zones of terminal moraines and glacial till. And if you live in places like Ohio, you know exactly what I'm talking about. During the various ice ages that occurred throughout the history of our planet, glaciers grew and moved over the landscape. They scraped across the earth, breaking apart rocks and topsoil, some of which contain gold and other important minerals that are carried along for the distance. Some gold moved hundreds if not thousands of miles from its original source, which was usually Canada. When the glaciers finally did melt, they left behind huge piles of boulders, rocks, and debris that contained gold and other important minerals. Now keep in mind that this gold is going to be extremely fine from the constant grinding and pounding that it was subjected to while it was being transported by glaciers. The best way to hunt for this type of gold is to find a glacial map of your state and prospect the creeks and rivers that can cut through the outwash of the terminal moraines. Coming in at number five is urban areas, like the cracks in the sidewalks in New York City. The streets of New York City have got gold and diamonds in them. Right down here in the cracks, look at that. All you need to do is clean them out. <laughs> and I'm gonna clean up all this material because I know that there's gold in there. And then we're gonna take it down and pan it. And I'm gonna show you what I get. I don't know if you can see that. It's so tiny. But you'll see it when I pan it out later. What's that? 
That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Look at that. Who's crazy now? I'm gonna take it and pan it out. So I got my bag of dirt right here. We're gonna take it down to water, pan it out, see if we got any gold. So come on, let's go. That's a pearl! See that? There's a big piece right there. There's a little piece of gold right there, see that? There's a nice big chunk of gold right there. Another piece of something right there. I don't know if you can see it right there, see that? I'm gonna go through it and I'll put up a snapshot of it. Coming in at six, believe it or not, meteor impact craters. There are places around the world that have been known to have gold deposits that have formed in the base of these impact craters. Places like this. The Sudbury Basin impact structure is the third largest known impact crater on Earth. As a result of the metal deposits, the Sudbury area is one of the world's major mining communities, and the basin is one of the world's largest suppliers of nickel and copper ores. But that impact pales in comparison to our next impact crater. The Redefort Crater is located in eastern South Africa, where it is centered around the town of Redefort. Johannesburg and Pretoria are located on the outer impact zone. This is by far the largest confirmed impact crater on the planet. The meteor created this massive crater, which measured 16 miles in diameter, which is the size of all of New York City. At the time of impact, it was traveling at 36,000 miles per hour. It constitutes 95% of all the world's platinum reserves. The impact generated a massive massive explosion, the likes which had never been seen before. It was equivalent in energy to the detonation of one quadrillion tons of TNT. Within seconds, all ground within a 1,300 mile radius ignited to the intense thermal radiation. Large amounts of molten rock filled the impact crater, which took tens of thousands of years, if not longer, to cool. This molten rock contained abundant supplies of gold, platinum, palladium, and nickel. Imagine a meteorite the size of Table Mountain traveling at 20 kilometers per second. Well, this massive object struck Freda Fort Dome and destroyed all forms of life. The impact, or first phase, created a massive dent in the earth. The second phase was an immediate rebound that brought the deepest rock layers to the surface. Lastly, erosion set in, and over millions of years, many crater-like features had been weathered away. Meteorite impact structures are complex, and they're made up of concentric rings. The same rippling effect is seen when one drops an object into water. The inner crater caused by the impact was roughly 100 kilometers in diameter. The rippling effect extended to almost 300 kilometers in diameter. The ridges near Friedefort and Paris form the core and inner circle of the dome. A second circle is seen in the hills in the vicinity of Fochville. This ring reaches past the Gatsrand near Kaltenville in the north to Kronstadt in the south, where it lies buried underneath much younger Karoo Age sedimentary rocks. Remnants of the third ring may be observed in a line from Fentersdorp to Krugersdorp. Due to erosion, the rest of this ring is not clearly visible today. Miners found gold in the Freda Fort Dome Mountains more than 150 years ago. Now keep in mind that not all meteor impact zones are going to have gold formations. That's an exception to the rule. But if you remember, a lot of the gold that we have here on Earth originated where? From meteorites, especially the terminal bombardment that happened 3.9 billion years ago. 
Coming in at number seven are fresh road cuts. These are some of the best places that I like to look for new gold deposits because a lot of these logging roads or new construction zones that are cut their way through the mother load country can tap into unknown reserves or new gold deposits that nobody ever thought about looking for. Road cuts are really important. You can see where they put this Highway 50 in here. And they cut through this side here of limestone. What was inside of it? This huge granitic mass, quartz monzonite, which has been altered. I've got the limestone, which is the Ely limestone on the outside of it. And then inside, I've got this beautiful looking Gaussian sitting in there. When you see these things, be safe about it. You're gonna sample them. You're gonna sample across them because that way you get an idea. If you find gold, then you gotta localize it. Is it on the outer halo, the outer band, or was it more towards the center? You're also looking for indications of copper. Look for malachite. Look for chrysocolla, for all the carbonates of copper. Oh, there is gold in there. Look at that. Little tiny pieces of gold. And I got gold right up in there. A whole bunch of fine gold. Yeah, you can see those sulfides right there. You see that? Some of that ground up gold in there. Oh, that's looking nice. That's looking real nice. Coming in at number eight is fingerboards and CPUs. Now a lot of gold and precious metals can be recovered from old computer parts like CPUs and fingerboards. And we've done it before in the past. It's extremely dangerous, but it can be done. Gold can be gathered from computer CPUs and fingerboards by a process of using aqua regia to collect the gold and put it in solution. The two main ingredients are 70% nitric acid and 30 to 35% hydrochloric acid. As you can see, aqua regia actually puts gold in solution. And when gold is in solution, it looks like this. After it's rinsed, this is what gold powder looks like, which can be put in a crucible and simply melted down into a small gold button. In fact, here's a video of us in the later stages of making one of those buttons. I can get this out of there without marking it up too bad. Plop that thing down there. Wow, 11.6 grams. Somebody who's an expert in the field about this is Shri Tips. Now Shri Tips has been doing this since September of 2010. He said it started as a hobby and still to this day it's mostly that's what it is for him. He's extremely knowledgeable in this field. In fact, he's made countless videos on gold extraction from computer parts and scrap using aqua regia and other chemical techniques that most people have never even heard of. If you get a chance, I strongly suggest you go check out his videos. Now in this particular video, he is going into great detail about why you should not use the commonly accepted percentage ratios that you use to create aqua regia. He's extremely advanced in developing new techniques for using acids and bases for extracting gold from computer parts, among other things. I'll leave a link down below to his channel so you can check out his work. He's really good at what he does, and if you follow instructions, you'll be able to get a bunch of gold and silver from your computer scrap. Coming in at number nine, it's one of my favorites, culvert pipes. The corrugated metal pipes that run underneath streets, especially if you live in the mother load country or near gold producing mining districts. We have made many videos in the past about this and this is a perfect place to find gold. And some guys even put their own sluice boxes in these drainage pipes and then they weld gates on the outside to keep people out. Keep in mind that most of the gold concentrations like in a sluice box is gonna be at the head of these drainage culverts, not at the tail. That's where you wanna focus all your attention and the sluice box if you decide to mount one in there. If you are fortunate enough to find a culvert that has good gold in it, especially if you're in the mother load country, I highly recommend you keep it a secret because you're going to have every gold chaser in the world looking for that culvert pipe. And while we're on the subject, I also recommend that you get yourself a Keen A52 sluice. It's got the built-in classifier right on top. All you got to do is mount it in the culvert pipe at the head of the culvert, not the tail. Mount it in there, camouflage it, and go back and check it after the monsoon or rainy seasons. I guarantee it'll be loaded with gold if somebody hasn't stolen it. First thing you're gonna notice about this new Keen A52S sluice is it's got a grizzly right up on top, a classifier. And that's what makes it unique. You can dump stuff in, you don't have to classify, this does all the work for you. You're gonna want at least one inch of drop for every foot of box. So I'm gonna drop the tail of this box three inches. Yeah, I'm really gonna get wet. Give 
if I can tap that up to the top for you. There you go. Super fines, ultra fines running all through there. You see that? You got a big chunker right there. See that? And of course, number 10, our favorite, is gold in Home Depot sand. Now, when we first made this video, nobody ever thought about looking in the sand from either Home Depot or Lowe's. But we did, and we made a video about it. Well, hey, everybody. Jeff Williams here with AshleWilliams.com. Okay, what are we doing today? Well, we got something special for you today. Let me tell you. Now, I know you're thinking, Jeff, you're in the parking lot. There can't be no gold out there. And that's where you'd be wrong. So what we did is we went in there and got three 50-pounders of general purpose sand. And we're going to take it back to the shop and see if we got some gold. So here we go. We got three bags of it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to split this open and we're going to dump it in trauma here. Because if I was a panty, it'd take me all week. So here we go! Remember when you're working a trauma and you're doing a cleanup, you make sure you scrub everything down into that cleanup bucket. If you don't want no gold, get away! Get away! Okay, so we got all the concentrates in this bucket right here. Now, one more thing I gotta tell you is old buzzard or George Massey said that the bags that dirt he was getting came directly from California. Some of the sand plants they got out there. And we checked with these bags, but they don't have any tag on them. So we asked the general manager, and he didn't know either. So we're gonna find out real quick like. Now because I'm working with sand, I really don't think I'm gonna need to classify my concentrates like we do when we're out in the gold fields. Okay, let's see what we got, come on. I'm gonna stratify that material. Ooh, yeah, gonna get wet too. I'm hoping there's something in here. For all that work. If there is, I'm sure it's really fine. But it would be nice to get a nug nugget coming out of there. Ooh, see that black sand in there? See all that? Ooh, I'm getting excited. I don't know about you. Come on, nugget. I'm gonna gently pan that just in case there's any fines in there. <laughs> Moment of truth, here we go. Okay, that's about as far down as I wanna get. Okay, come here, take a look at this. I'll get the sun over here, come here. See what we got there. There's something red, I don't know what that is. See if I can shake that down for you. Well, there's a little bit of gold. What do you know? Old George wasn't kidding. Woo, look at that. I don't know if you can see it, there's a nice flake right there. Yeah, that ain't that bad. There's another little piece right there. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Right there. And all those fines right up there in the corner. Woo wee, let me get my, my jewelers loop so we can take a look at that. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a nice piece. Whole bunch of little fines in there too, see that? That ain't that bad, I'll take that. Woo. I guess you could say number 11 is secret drift mine because we're finding tons of gold nuggets down here, oh, yeah. just like that one. Now we're currently in the process of rehabbing our hard rock mine and of course, figuring out the logistics for this drift mine to get you guys down in there so you can mine out your own gold and keep your own dream alive. 
because we know just how important that can be. What are you doing up there, Jason? We're finding lots of gold. Yeah, lots of gold, baby. Yeah. Here we go, Jeff. Go All right. You finding Ooh. it? That's the oh. Oh my God! Look at that piece. All right, go. What you got? Uh, oh, working, you got a rich pocket. I've been working this little pocket here. Right. And it's gold I have never seen before. You get you'd get a little bug, open up, and you'd break it off, and it's just quartz crystals and just gold sticking out all the quartz crystals. Wow. Little pieces of gold. That I've is got, I've got some specimens. I'll show you. It's just, I've, I've never seen anything like it. It's wow. just, it's unbelievably rich. It's just this little pocket right here. You <laughs> find those, gold. those little tiny hematite vugs. Right. And you crack them open with the, <laughs> you crack them open with a hammer mill, and I start kind of like brushing them, and then I move my hand, and there's just a little pile of gold nuggets sitting there. Wow. And you just brush them out. Yeah, they're, they're not really attached to the quartz very well, but holy smokes, I've never seen anything like it. Now, I know you got the fever as bad as I do, if not worse, or else you wouldn't be sitting there watching me sweat to the oldies all day long digging out them gold nuggets. And if you're not already signed up as a premium patron, it's the perfect place for like-minded people who want to find that shiny where they share their experiences on finding that gold. And we all benefit from that. And not only that, they get gold from this gold mine. They get specimen gold. They got exclusive access to Slim's merchandise store. And of course, they qualify to come out on our three-day gold mining tours, Placer and Hard Rock, where they're finding fistful of nuggets on our legendary world-class claim you know the stuff that dreams are made of 14.4 grams what Jeez. is that good yeah. lord oh my god 24.3 grams look at the size of them nuggets okay oh they go ugly nuggets mm -mm -mm. Uh, tic tacs don't count oh my gosh what the heck is that wow just think that could be you out there finding gold and making history. Ooh, I'm getting all excited just looking at all those gold nuggets out there. Now, if you're up to the challenge and you want to do something that most people can only dream about, you can get started just by looking for this icon at the end of the video. Just click on it, become a premium patron, and get ready for your chance to get them fistfuls of gold. Now, if you like geeking out over rocks like I do, you're going to love all the videos that we put together on geology and gold deposition. I put it in simple terms so anybody can understand it and get out there and find their own gold deposits and of course don't forget to smash that like button smash it hard and we'll see you on the next video